Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. If you like it, subscribe, like and share. And for my existing subscribers and new subscribers, thank you for your support. Now today I was looking at my phone and up came this news release about a lady dying of terminal cancer and she was 2,165 pounds in debt because the DWP had not paid her because she had been unable to respond to them within the deadline because she was in hospital. Now, as I read down um, the whole newspaper article, I could have slagged off the DWP and as I read about the family and how they didn't know about she hadn't her rent hadn't been paid, I could have slagged them off as well and said, look, you know your sister or your family member is terminally ill, you know she's in and out of hospital, you should be checking and asking how, how is your rent being paid? Have you got direct debit set up? I mean, for government um, employees, um, when they're off sick, their salary doesn't stop for quite a considerable time. Not everyone has that luxury. Worse, if you're unemployed, where are you supposed to get money from to set up a direct debit? to make sure your rent is paid, your council, tax is, your council tax is paid, and everything else. Well, this was the situation with this lady. And as I read the whole article, it was quite sad because when, he, when her brother, her name is Carol, Carol Jones, she's 65, and she died last week. And when her brother tried to call DWP and explain um, that she was in hospital and asked for details. They said that they couldn't release any details because of the Data Protection Act. Now, that led me to think, I used to work for a private client in a firm of solicitors. In that department, we dealt with nil rate band wills, which are for rich people who have trust, and we dealt with in that time, it was enduring powers of t attorney because that was pre-2007. And before I left in 2009, the lasting power of attorney came in. And of course, we have the general power of attorney. Now, if this family or, you know, had known she was sick at a point where she wasn't um, deteriorating to that extent, they could have taken out a lasting power of attorney, which would have helped them um, sort out her financial affairs, they would have been able to speak an action on her behalf with the DWP. A lot of people don't know these things though, and they're not expensive to set up. I mean, depending on where you go, they can range from £65. It might seem a lot to some people who don't have money, but when you think it's, it's your access to help somebody who is no longer able to help themselves. And it can range between £65, I think, and 200 depending on where you go. But the last, the enduring power of attorney, which was in place when I was working at that firm of solicitors, that gave you license to deal with all manners of affairs. You could buy and sell on behalf of that person. You could deal with all their financial affairs. There was nothing you couldn't do. It was as though you were that person. But it left the person vulnerable. So they stopped that in 2007 on the 1st of October. And they brought in the lasting power of attorney. And it's broken up into two parts. One part is to do with the property and the and finances. And the other part is to do with welfare. And I'm not quite sure. I think that one you can still use it when the person loses their capacity, providing they set it up when they were full capacity, when they had full capacity. Um, the general power of attorney, however, that's only financial affairs, um, which is what um, you would need for DWP. It doesn't allow you to do anything else, but um, that ceases to be effective once the independent, once the, the person or what they call the donor loses mental capacity. And as I was reading the article, I was thinking, 
if that if her twin if her twin brother had had a power of attorney he could have acted on her behalf and got things sorted out but there again he didn't find out until the deadline had passed and because the deadline had passed they'd stop paying her so by the time she died she was 2165 pound in debt the family were worrying about whether or not because they thought they'd have to pay it in the end dwp paid it and they said they wouldn't expect a relative to pay the, um, a claimant's debt but then i thought to myself well if they had been given if they hadn't stopped her payments and they'd given her everything she was entitled to would they then still say that the claimant wasn't responsible for the debt i don't think so i think it's because they were negligent in stopping her payment because she was in hospital they didn't investigate why she didn't respond i mean you have somebody on your records you have all these doctor's notes you must know she's terminally ill so if she doesn't respond wouldn't you first find out if she's in hospital but oh no they have these stupid machines that uh, prompt you when a deadline has passed and automatically stops the payment there's no human intervention so this poor woman she i mean it, it wouldn't surprise me if the stress of having her benefits stopped contributed to her death because like i all i always say stress is a great is a big factor a big contributing factor in cancer we all have cancer cells and once stress kicks in, it just triggers it. So it wouldn't surprise me if the fact that, because I think she went into hospital two weeks ago and she died last week. It's so tragic and it's not the first one. There's so many, we're hearing more and more. One lady had her benefits stopped because she had some savings. I don't even think it was the limit. I think you're allowed 10,000. I don't even think she had the limit, but she had some kind of savings she was saving up for her retirement and they refused to give her money they told her to live off of her savings she was down to two pounds and she threw herself off of a bridge it's so sad you're dealing with the most vulnerable people not everybody is scroungers not everybody's trying to rip off the system and yet there is nobody um, that is giving personal attention anymore everything is done online if you if you have a low level of literacy you're screwed they're not talking to you anymore you can't go to the okay you go there initially if you have an interview just because they want to make sure that you're not lying and you are who you say you are and they do all those biometrics but once that you're left to your own devices and God forbid you fail to do something you're supposed to do and it's not logged onto their computer or onto their system, your money gets stopped. And how are you supposed to live? And these people know you're de they're dependent on the system for their rent, the basic needs, according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, basic needs are a roof over your head, water. You know, basic stuff that everybody should have and enjoy. And yet they're, they're deprived of even their basic needs. Forget about developmental needs and, you know, those kind of things, or even reaching self-actualization. That's an impossibility. These people don't even get the, 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 the basic at the bottom of the pile. They don't even get that. God forbid if they're sanctioned or if they've done anything remotely wrong or if something is inconsistent or if something doesn't match up and that computer sends out a red flag because there's an anomaly, anomaly. My goodness, it's so sad. Anyway, for those of you, I'm not quite sure um, how many of you may have spouses or are in a relationship, civil partnership, whatever you're in, and your partner is not well, or you feel that they are going downhill, or they may lose capacity or anything, you can't just say you're their husband, or you're their wife, or you're their spouse, or you're their partner. You need to take out a lasting power of attorney. So I'm going to put some links in the um, below.
Um, like I said, the EPA, I'm going to read out the different things. I wrote it out separately for you. Um, yeah. An EPA gives the person appointed. Well, like I said, the EPA is not in existence anymore. It stopped in 2007. But an EPA gave the person appointed of a, as attorney the power to dispose of property, to deal with financial affairs, sign documents, make purchases on behalf of the individual. But the attorney does not have the power to make substantial or unusual gifts or make decisions about personal care and welfare. So the money is monitored. But, you know, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to go out and buy a Lamborghini out of the people and money. You can't do that. OK, a lasting power of attorney, which I mentioned before, um, there's one part that deals with property and affairs and the other one deals with health and welfare. And you can have a solicitor for either or both. And you can use the same firm of solicitors for either or both. Um and but the lasting power of attorney must be regular registered in the office of public of the public guardian. Now that is time consuming and it can be a bit costly. Not 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 astronomical, but it does cost a bit. I can't remember how much it is. And plus, I left working that solicitors about ten years ago, so it's um, the fees would have changed anyway. But with the EPA, you didn't need to have it registered with that. Um, with the Office of Public Guardian. You could just, once that was registered, that's all you needed. You had that piece of paper, you take that paper to the bank, or well, that document to the bank. I made one for my daughter years ago when I was work, when I was working for the solicitors, I made, took advantage of all of what they had to offer because I was an employee. So I got my enduring power of attorney and because it's because it's before because um, it was drawn up before 2007, it's still valid. I got my um, nil rate band, which at the time was about £350. So I got that as well. I goodness knows how much they are now. I'm not even sure whether it, it works for somebody who doesn't have a lot of money, but I had one anyway. Um, but yeah, it is important to get these things in place. Um, let me see. So that was the lasting power of attorney introduced by the Mental Capacity Act 2005. It replaced EPAs because they felt that the EPAs left the donor vulnerable because you have to know who you're dealing with. And you know what was happening? A lot of people were giving EPAs to their carers. You know, the elderly, bless their little hearts. You know, they trusted their carers and they were giving EPAs to them and they were ripping them off left, right and centre. So they stopped doing that. And that is good because I don't know what process you have to go through um, with the public office of public guardian, but I know it's a pretty scrupulous process. So that's what's in place now, the lasting power of attorney. It replaced the EPAs and um, then we have the general power of attorney, um, which is normally POA. They don't really say general. And that's limited to dealing with financial affairs if and, and cease to be effective once the donor loses mental capacity. Um, the enduring power of attorney took immediate effect but you would have to um, choose someone to look after your affairs if you lost the capacity to manage them yourself. With all of these power of attorneys, you would have to have full capacity. You can't be on the way out and then somebody's telling you to do a power of attorney. No, you have to have, be in full, full faculty. All your senses intact. Um, and that's it's strictly limited to financial affairs. But like I said, they're no longer made since 2007. But those made before that date are still valid. Um, an EPA is an enduring power of attorney under English law is a legal authorization to act on someone else's behalf in legal and financial matters unlike other powers of attorney. It can continue in force after the person granting it loses mental capacity the others don't so the one that i drew up even after i've lost capacity 
my daughter could still use the EPA. Um, but must not have been created while the person, but must be created while the person, like I said, is, has full mental capacity. And it can be used to manage the affairs of people who have lost the ability to deal with their affairs without the need to apply to the court of protection. So the other two now, you have to apply to the court of protection, which is an expensive and lengthy process. Under the Mental Capacity Act 2005, it came into force on the 1st of October 2007. As long as the donor has mental capacity, an EPA can be used if it's dated before 2007. So I hope you found that useful. So like I said, you know, when you're dealing with a DWP and you have relatives and family members, and it, it, they could just be friends. If you know that they're on universal credit, and they've gone into hospital unexpectedly, just visit them and say, look, you know, is your rent being paid? Is it being paid by direct debit? I mean, I guess it depends on your relationship because not everybody's going to offer that kind of information. But at least you should know so that, you know, even if a letter can be written to notify DWP, you know what I mean? So it is important that your loved ones are protected and you can do it. We live in a world that's become so isolated these days, you know, people just get on with it, their lives, they just get on with each other, and people don't check on each other that much anymore. So like that lady, her twin brother, I don't know how long it took for him. He had obviously not seen her in two months because by the time he found the paperwork, um, it was already out of date. So, and they'd been writing to her since I think about April, May and she hadn't paid the rent for two months. I mean, three months, I think it was just about three months um, because she hadn't been paid. So yeah, it's not nice, it's not nice. So keep tight with your people then, work good, and that's all for now, bye-bye.